and good morning. This is Michael Lodge. I'm glad that you have joined me. Well, today is 9-11. It's that day where we go back into our history of our minds and we remember what we were doing on that day, what was happening, what was going on. I remember exactly what I was doing on 9-11. I was on my way to work. I had no radio in my car because I had bought this old car. It wasn't beat up or anything. It was just an old car that I bought at a Los Angeles police auction. I think I paid 500 bucks for it. <laughs> so I could drive back and forth to work so I could have a car that I was not putting miles on my other car. My good car. So I bought this old $500 car. No radio, and I drove to work that morning. And I always went to work about 7 a.m. in the morning. And I drove from Orange County up to Long Beach, California, on Ocean Avenue. And my office was directly across from the World Trade Center there in Long Beach. So like a normal day, I drove into the parking lot, parked my car, and... uh I thought it was strange because when I went through the guard gate going down into the parking garage, that security was looking under my car. They had mirrors, and they had never done that before. So I thought that was a little bit strange, but then I thought, well, maybe they're just improving the security in, inside this building because we were directly across from the World Trade Center, and, and then uh, just down the street was the city hall, and then also was uh, the county building, so the county courthouse. So I thought, well, maybe they're just strengthening the security because we're so close to so many government buildings. So I drove down, parked my car, got in the elevator, and I thought, well, this is strange because normally there's people going up on the elevator with me <laughs> to my office. Got to my elevator, got up to my office on the 14th floor, overlooking the the uh, Queen Mary. No one was there. I was the only person in my in my in my uh, uh, office building, office uh, unit. So I started my daily work, and then all of a sudden there was a knock on the door, and I opened it. And there was a police officer. <laughs> police officer said, "Listen, we're asking that all tenants evacuate the building right now. Uh, you should not be here." So I thought, well, that's that's strange. And I said, well, what, why is it that I'm having to leave? Well, because the World Trade Center has been attacked. I said, what? The World Trade Center across the street? No, the World Trade Center in New York has been attacked. And I said, so I said, okay, fine. So I went back to my desk and I immediately pulled up the internet and started searching the news. And sure enough, the World Trade Center had been attacked. I was shocked. And then all of a sudden I got a phone call. And the phone call was from the owner of the shipping containment company that I, I was consulting to. And he goes, listen, are you the only one there? I said, yes, I'm, I, I, right now I'm it. And he goes, listen, if anybody shows up to work, I want you to tell them to leave the building. We are no longer having a, a, a work day in the office today because of of what happened at the World Trade Center. And I want you to leave. And I want you to tell people to meet down at this certain restaurant. And uh, we'll take body count to see exactly how many people have, have shown up and, and send them home safely. I said, okay, fine. I, 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 will, I will do that. I, I, I still, it was in my mind, I thought, my God, I don't really know what's going on. Then all of a sudden there was another knock on the door. And there was another police officer who said, listen, we have a bomb threat on this building. You need to leave the building now. I, and I was just shocked because all of a sudden I'm in a building that's several stories tall and we have a bomb threat. And we couldn't use the elevator so I had to walk all the way 14 floors down to my garage and get into my car and drive and drive out of it. So I'm driving home, and in my mind, I'm thinking, my God, what in the world is going on? So I got home, 
went into my living room, turned the TV on, and at that time, all that we had really for news was CNN. So I became I became glued to CNN. That's when CNN reported the news. That's when they actually did reporting. None of this commentary and all this other nonsense. It was real reporting of news. So I sat there. And about the time I turned the television on, that is when the second plane went through. And I'm watching this, and I'm thinking, my 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 God, what is going on? What has happened? And then pretty soon, there was an attack on the Pentagon. <coughs> Excuse me. I became addicted to the news. I sat there all night. And into the morning, I don't even remember sleeping, to tell you the truth. I don't remember ever going to bed. I don't think I even went to bed. I literally was watching and and trying to take in everything that was going on, trying to learn everything that had just happened. All the people who had just been killed through terrorism. And I listened to it, and I watched it. And my heart was heavy. My heart was just so heavy that... Those few days that after that, we didn't go to work the next day. Tried to do everything from home. We didn't have sophistication like we have now where everything was tied like that. Everything's tied through the internet. It wasn't that way back then. But I remember watching the people jump out of the building because they thought that was the only way that they could live or survive or just end their life because when we saw those two buildings collapse, just literally collapse, melted from inside, that it destroyed the internal structure of the buildings that it just literally collapsed, killing thousands of people. Fire, police, civilians, people who never suspected that this would happen to them. Children who said goodbye to their dad and mom in the morning, thinking thinking that when they got home everything would be fine, life would be okay. But it was a day that hate took over, hate took over, and it became bad. Not just in New York, in Washington D.C., in Philadelphia, I mean, in, in Pennsylvania, all across the nation. Now they removed us from that building because they heard that there was another plane on its way towards Los Angeles, and we were directly in 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 line with the federal trade building across the street, and the federal buildings across the street, the county, and everything else. And that's where they would probably hit because Los, Long, Long Beach is a trade and a shipping point. All of a sudden, security heightened around all of the shipping facilities in Long Beach because they didn't know if, the, if there would be attack on our shipping lines that were stationed there. It's just one of those things that you remember back and you think, how many times are we going to have to live through this type of terrorism? How, In fact, I even asked today with BLM and Antifa on the streets every single day trying to create havoc and destruction to our communities and to our cities. How long do we have to go through this? Did we not learn from 9-11 what damage it does to a nation? They're certainly not trying to help the nation. They're certainly not trying to make lives better. Destruction does not make a life better. Killing out businesses, killing out people, attacking fellow Americans does not make life better. It makes it worse. So the terrorists that day were put on alert. Osama bin Laden was had a target on his back because he took revenge on America and he he claimed 
that that was his responsibility. And we all know the story of what happened to him. Took a while. Took a while to get to him. But we finally got him. And we're finally getting other terrorists out there that are trying to do damage to this nation. A nation like America can survive. And we have. We have become a great nation. This is a nation that all other countries look towards for a moral compass in the world who protects the rights of those who are trampled down upon. That's what America has become the, the almost the world police. We don't like being the world police, but sometimes there's got to be a stronger power that steps in and helps out those individuals who are being destroyed by their own people. Now we have to say, we don't want to be there. We don't want to be in Afghanistan. We don't want to be in Iraq. We don't want to be in in the Middle East. We don't want to be there. It's a volatile region that has been fighting amongst themselves for how long? Since the beginning of life, I believe. I believe. America is a nation that survives. It rebuilds. We get stronger. Sometimes we have individuals in our country that don't want this peace, don't want this economic strength. They have a different view on politics than the, 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 all, all of us. They don't agree with us. And that's what happens in a democracy. It's when they go over the line and violence becomes prevalent within their statement of what they want, that's when we have to shut them down. Because then it becomes internal terrorism. And those who do not speak up and out about these individuals and about these groups, they should be considered dangerous also. Because if, if they are unwilling to come out and condemn violence and condemn the very groups who are promoting and conducting violence against Americans, if they are unwilling to condemn that action, then they should not be trusted by the American people. Any act of terrorism, any act of violence, any act of mayhem, any act of chaos needs to be condemned, and the people who do it need to be condemned. We need to know the enemy within. Those who refuse to acknowledge terrorism, and this was the big problem during the Obama administration, he would not call ISIS ISIS, he would not call them terrorists, he would not identify them as who they actually were and the and the hate and the destruction that they committed, not just on the attack of America, but on their very own people. Raping the women, destroying the Christian artifacts, destroying, uh, killing Christians. I mean, the, the list of, of mayhem and chaos and destruction and murder goes on, and Obama would never condemn it. Biden would never condemn it. They would, he would never go out and say who they were and what they were all about. They would never do that. It's amazing. If you go back and look at the history from 9-11 until now, we have seen a lot of nonsense. A lot of political nonsense. And this nonsense needs to be replaced with love. This has got to be replaced with common sense. It's got to be replaced with the rule of law. It has got to be replaced with Americans supporting each other. 
instead of this hate and contention and everything else that goes on in Congress and the Senate, of no one getting along, everyone attacking each other, and the American people have to learn, and we've learned it very well, that we can cannot depend upon the government to solve our community issues. It just does not, and it has not worked. It's up to us, individuals, Americans, to look at our communities and see what is needed, see what needs to be fixed, and work on it ourselves, because government never does anything. It's up to us. It's up to our churches. It's up to our our ministerial staffs. It's up to our our community leaders. It's up to our our or charitable organizations that help these communities to sit down and work together and say, okay, we have got to do this ourselves. And we've got to work together. I don't care what political party you are. I don't care what religion you are. It's up to you and I to sit down in our communities and figure out what needs to happen. If you've got shootings, why do you have shootings in your community? Figure that out. Take control of it yourself. Because government is not there to help you anymore. It can change. Government can change to the better for the American people. But it has to be you and I who send the message, listen, government, you're not doing your job. We're paying you all these taxes, but you're not doing it. So 9-11, it really has changed the way that we look at America. Political stances are created, and some are so very, very wrong. Political views are created by the same politicians who say and promise you that they're going to take care of you. But it's up to Americans to really remove politicians who are not doing the job for America. If you've got a politician in your community or in who's representing you in Congress, are they representing you or are they representing their party? And that's where we've come down to is that politicians don't care about the American people. What they're worried about and concerned about and what they love is the power and that party that they represent more than the American people gives them that power. And that's all that they care about. And this is where you and I, we need to change our vote to put people into office that care about their community. I believe in that with all my heart. That we, you and I, have a powerful thing in our pockets. And we can use it every single time that we go to that ballot box and vote. And we make good decisions on who we're voting for. I am amazed sometimes at this great nation. How resilient we are. 9-11 was an, an attack. It was an attack on our freedom, on our democracy, on our nation, on you and me personally because we love this nation so great. So maybe what we need to do basically is we knew that this was hate that caused 9-11. Let's turn it around and say, you know what? I love you. I don't care what party you are. I don't care what you believe politically. But I love you as an American. I love you as my neighbor. I love you as my church member. I love you as the guy who's selling newspapers on the corner. I, I, I love you. I don't care what your political belief is because in the end, you and I come together and we save this country. We make this country work. It's not the politicians. It is you and I. It's you and I who are out there every single day 
trying to make a buck to support our families and to support our life. And you and I have to work together on that. Even though that we may believe differently politically, we're still working together. We are in a political free zone when you and I are working together every single day to build something, to get something done. It's not the politician that's creating my job. It's you and I that's creating our job. So on this 9-11, let's remember how much you and I love each other. Let's remember that no matter who you are or who I am, we're going to support each other and we're going to love each other and we are going to work together and we are going to build something great for this for our community and for our families. It's up to you and I. It's not up to politicians. It's up to you and I. So on this 9-11, let's replace hate with love. Let's replace politics with you and I working together to build something, to create something. To make our communities better. To make our churches stronger. That's our responsibility. So put politics to the side. And remember who you are. You are an American. Listen, if you have any comments or concerns, send me a text at 818-252-5682. Again, that's 818 252 5682. I'll be more than happy to talk with you. I love the texts that come in. 9 11, replace hate with love because I love you. This is Mike Lodge. Talk with you soon. Bye bye. This podcast has been produced by Michael Lodge, fully focused on content. Join us on our website at www.lodge.co.com. Look forward to seeing you.